All right, so here we go. So it's going to be, we're going to do 2 6 and 2 7, take a 10 minute break, and then 12 30, we'll start exam number one. 2 6 will be almost all of our time. 2 7 is quick. 2 7 will be like 15 minutes, but 2 6 is going to be a long time. It's a long, hard section. All right, bunch of word problems. 176 inch board is cut into two pieces. One piece is three times the length of the other. Find the lengths of the two pieces. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So here, let me draw a board. One board is cut. So we're going to cut a board, like maybe cut it, like right there. The whole length of the board is 176. One piece is three times the other. <clears throat> One piece is three times the other. The whole thing's 176. So, all right, how do we go about how do we go about this? Well, let me help. On all the word problems we'll do today for sure, almost all the it's virtually always the case that when you do a word problem, one of the pieces of the problem is a simple X. Just a simple X. I say all that because here's Here's the mistake I see a lot of students make on this problem. A lot of people will read that. They'll see the three times, and they'll go three times x, which is, which is good. And then they'll go equals 176, and then they'll just divide by 3 to solve. And that's wrong. They're going to make a mistake at this point if they, if they think that's, that's all there is to the equation. That's part of it. That's part of it. But that's not all there is. And the, and the main thing I want to help you remember is there's always a plain X also, like every word problem. There's also a plain, simple X. So I think if you just kind of file that away, you know, in the back of your mind, like, hey, word problem, there better be a plain, simple X, and then also whatever, you know, 3X or whatever else they're talking about. There's got to be a plain, simple X, and then it might occur to you, oh, okay, plain, simple, yeah, and that's actually right now. That's the right formula. Let me show you more precisely where that comes from. One of these pieces is x, the other is three times as big, so it's 3x. Does that make sense? The length of this piece is 3x, and the length of this piece is x. doesn't matter, you know, left side, right side, how you, how you do it, but one of the pieces is x, and the other is three times as big. That's what they're saying. And then if you add the two of them up, whichever order doesn't matter, it's got a total of 176. Does that make sense? So the thing people forget sometimes is the plain X. Does that make sense? It should be there. And it, and it always will be. Even if you forget it for a second, just remember every word problem is going to have a plain X also as part of the deal. All right. Can you solve that thing now? An X plus 3X equals 176. Go ahead and solve for X there. X plus, what do we do with X? What's, what's invisibly always in front when, when no number is showing on the X? It's always a 1. Huh? We'll do a lot of that today in this word problem section. 1X and 3X is 4X. Then how do you solve for X? Last step's always divide, yeah. And then so X equals, I don't know, what is that? 44, thank you. X is 44. Now, they're going to ask for both the shorter piece and the longer. So their first question is, what's the shorter piece? How do we find... Um, so the, so, so you, when, once you've got X on a word problem, once you've got X, that's like the key, and now you can unlock any door. You can answer any question. So X is the key. Take it back now and, and, and plug it in. So right here, I'll put X is 44. Right here next to the 3. I'll put X is 44. So one of the pieces, the shorter piece, is just simply 44. But the other piece is 3 times 44, right? Because it's 3 times X, and now I know what X is. X is 44. The mystery's over. So it's 3 times 44. And what's that? 120, 132. Thank you. 132. So this piece must be 132 and the other piece is 44. So there's our two answers. The shorter, the shorter one's 44, the shorter piece. The longer piece 
is uh, 132. And we're done. So that makes sense? So once you get your X, just plug it into your setup, and you'll get, you know, that's the key. It'll unlock all the doors and answer all the questions. Questions on that one? Okay, if I move on from there. All right. How you do um, the word problems, you know, like on, or any problem for that matter. On test, I'm never picky. Do whatever way you want. So, um, and, and I'm going to try to show you the easiest way I can. So, all that is to say on this problem, I'm not even going to use an X. I'm not even going to do a word problem thing. Look what it says. Recent year, the cost of six small boxes of cer certain cereal was $9. How much did one box cost? So, six boxes, nine bucks. How much was one box? What, what do we, I'm not even going to use an X. What, do, what should we do to figure out the cost of one box if six boxes is $9? Yeah, it's just to divide, huh? Does that make sense? Just take the $9 and divide by six. That's all. I'm not going to do X and all that fancy stuff. What is that, 1.5? So it's $1.50 a box. Done. No need to. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure if you click on the question help, They'll, they'll bring an X in, and they'll do all kinds of fancy stuff, but it's just not necessary on that one, right? It'd be easier just to divide, and you're done. Is that good? That makes sense on that? Okay. The height of a building is 944 feet, which is about 501 feet higher than another building. What's the height of the second building? Give that a try. I wouldn't use an X. Again, it's just not needed. I just think about... Don't use subtract. Let me see what you do there. If you're not sure, read it a couple times. Can you all see those words? In the back, can you see that okay? Not really. Not really? I don't know if I can make it. Oh, I can't. I'd have to do it earlier on that. So basically what it says is the height of a building is 944 and says which, you know, this is 501 feet higher than another building. What is the height of the second building? So, so they're telling me the first building is 944. This is like the first building. And this one's 501. This, this 944 is 501 feet higher than the other. So how do I find the other building? Just subtract. Yeah, there's no need for an X and all that stuff. So it's going to be 443. Done. It's just a subtraction problem. No need for an X or any of that monkey business, right? Only going to use X's when we really have to. Good? All right, so those two are easy. Some of the other ones won't be, but those two are nice and quick. I'll flash. Okay, so we have... It, I can't ever say that word. It, it, itarud? Itarad? Sled race extends 1,049 miles from Anchorage to Nome. If a musher is four times as far from Anchorage as from Nome, how many miles has the musher completed? I think um, it'd be helpful to have a little kind of like map of the thing here. So we have Anchorage and Nome. And it's a thousand forty nine total, you know, total width. Thousand forty nine total width. So, okay. Now, uh, let me let you think. It's better than me just whipping it out real quick. Think about what it's saying about the musher. Right here, especially. 
That's, that's the key phrase. So see if you can put that musher on the map. And, you know, the, trips, the, the race starts from Anchorage, goes to Nome. So put that musher. The musher's the driver of the dogs, right? Put that musher on the map where he or she is. So, where's the musher? Is the musher closer to the end or closer to the beginning? So it starts here. Start, it starts here at, at Anchorage. It ends at Nome. Is the musher, according to the musher, is four times as far from Anchorage as from Nome? Four times as far from Anchorage as from Nome. What, what are we going to do with that? Is, he, is, is the musher closer to the end or the beginning? That's way, way down here near the end. Does that make sense? And and what do we can do with what do you do with four times? Four x. And if there's a four x, what is there in every word problem? A plain x, also, huh? So careful, don't. Here's the mistake I see a lot of people. They'll go four x is thousand forty nine. That's not right. Although that's almost right. What what's missing from that? The plain x. Right? Remember, there's always a plain X. I'm just trying to really key your memory. There's always a plain X. And if on the map, it's X here, it's 4X there. Right? Because the, that's what they're saying. The musher, here, this is the musher. This is the musher. Right there. Right? The dog sled. Right there. The dog sled's right there. The musher, the dog sled's right there. Four times as far from the beginning as he is from the end. 4x back to the beginning, only x to the end, right? 4x back to Anchorage, only x to the end. That's what they're saying. Four times as far from Anchorage as from no, right? Make sense? So that means we just add 4x and x to equal the 1049, huh? And there's our equation. All right, we can solve for x there with the greatest of ease. What's in front of the plain x? A 1 always, so it's 5x is 1049, solve for x, divide by 5, this cancel, x is some big number, 209.8, thank you, and so we got it, that's our answer, let's go back, and but let's go back, what happened, why is 209 or 210 rounded, why is that not the answer? Did we do the problem wrong? Yeah. <clears throat> Good. We have, we're almost done. But this is why I did all that. Um, just, to, just to make you remember, I'm hoping to be a little dramatic there, to help you remember on a word problem, X is not necessarily the answer. Our work's great. That's all good. But we're not done. How do you know? Look at the question. So the key is X is only the key. Well, yeah, it is there. The key, X is the key, but that's not necessarily the door. Right? How, what is? Look, what's the question? Always go back to the question. Got to make sure, which the answer might not be X. The musher has completed how much? Well, how do you figure out how much the musher has completed? What is it on the diagram? Look up here at the picture. It's the 4X, isn't it? 4X is how much he's finished, right? That's how much from the start to where he's at currently, right? It's the 4x, not x, that they want from me. Do you see that? That's how much he's completed. x is how much he has to go to the end. 209.8 is how far he has to go to the end. That's not how much he's completed. So be careful on a word problem. Once you get x, you're not done. You've got to actually answer the question. It, may, it might be x. A lot of times it is x. But sometimes on word problems it's not, and this is one of those cases. The answer is actually going to be 4. Well, how do you get that? Well, you just take 4x, and you take that x, and you plug it in. Now, don't round. Remember, you can't round to the very end. Never round partway through a problem. So uh, I'll round at the end because it will throw off your answer. If you round and then plug in, it will throw things off if you have more operations to do using a rounded number, right? Don't do that. Keep it as it is. Plug it in, round at the end. And so somebody had that, 800 and... 
39.2. Now round. Round 839. For it, that is the answer. Questions on that. Does that make sense? See how 4x is how much he's completed? And x was how much he had, right? X, the musher's right here with x to go, 4x completed. So when we got our answer for x, I had to plug it into 4x and round it. 439 miles are completed out of the 1049 trip. Is that good? Questions on that? All right. You guys are all just giving me a straight look. I'm not sure what that means. Hope that means you're happy. Let me know if you're not. All right. So the sum of the page, uh, uh, facing pages. So they're just being tricky there. If you take a book and you just open it up anywhere, you know, and you got facing page numbers. Say this is page 70. What if I say, hey, guys, I just opened a book and I'm looking at two facing pages. This is page 73. What must this page be? 74. It's just a tricky way for them to say two numbers, one is high, one higher than the other. That's all they're saying. With the whole facing page numbers in a book, what does that always mean? That always means one is one higher than the other, huh? That's what facing pages in a book always means. It's just a tricky way for them to say all that. So um, it's X. Remember, there's always X in every word problem. And what's the second page? X plus one. See, now why am I doing that? Well, I don't know what the first page is. First page could be 73. If so, the second page would be 73 plus 1, 74. For example, I don't know what X is. But you see, that's a way of representing. X could be any page, and then X plus 1 would be 1 higher, huh? Does that make sense for facing pages? Now, what am I going to do for those? What about that X and X plus 1? What does it say I should do with them? What does that mean? Sum? Sum means adding up, right? So that would be x added to x plus 1. That's those two added up. Is 73. that good? There we go. All right. Shall we solve for x? Everybody okay with that? So the two pages added up, x and x plus 1, equals 73. Can you solve that for x? So the invisible ones in front of the x's, right? 1x and 1x is 2x. Like that. And solve for x. Uh, subtract 1 from both sides. So 2x equals so that's 72. Last step. Divide by 2. X equals is that 36? So 36. So what are the two pages then? If X is 36, so X is 36, so the pages are 36 and 37. So the two pages, so the left page is 36, the right page is 37. Pages 36 and 37. Questions. We good? No questions? So facing pages in a book. X and X plus 1. All right. I'll flash off of there if you've got that copy to Okay. So Edna, Ellie, and Elsa are consecutive integers. All right. Now what does that mean when they say, let me write that out here. Consecutive integers, or that just means no, consecutive numbers. So what does it mean to be consecutive? 
means in a row, one right after the other. Right, consecutive. You know, they talk about sports teams winning consecutive titles or whatever. That means in a row, one year right after the next, right? So, so, like, so 17, 18, 19, or, you know, 83, 84, 85, etc. cetera. So those would all be examples of three numbers in a row, three consecutive integers. And that's what they're talking about. The ages of Edna, Ellie, and Elsa are three numbers like that. They're three numbers in a row. 17, 18, 19, or 83, 84, 85. So and they want us to find them. So I don't know what they are. I don't know, you know, exactly what they are. So, but I know what I'm going to let the first one be in every word problem. What's the first one going to be? Going to be X. And then what will the second one be? Yeah, because they go up by one every time. What will the third one be? Yeah, X plus 2. Because they just go up by one every time. When they're numbers in a row like that, consecutive numbers just go up by one every time. Okay, so now let's take those. And what am I supposed to do with those numbers? Yeah, the sum, the adding up is 108, huh? So it's going to be x plus x plus 1. Plus x plus 2 is 108. There we go. There's our equation. Is that good? Can you solve that? Can you solve that for x? So the invisible ones in front of the x is 1x, 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 3x, and then 1 and 2 is 3, 108. x is going to be alone. So subtract 3 from both sides. So this is gone. We get 3x equals, it's at 105. Last step to get x alone. Divide by 3. x is, what's that? 35, yeah, 35, so x is 35, so what, what do we do whenever we get x in a word problem, bring it back and plug it in, right, that's always the key, now we go unlock the doors, right, the mystery's over, we know what x is, x is 35, so everywhere we had written x, we plug in a 35, so 35, 35 plus 1, which is 36, and 35 plus 2, which is 37, so the ages of Edna, Ellie, and Elsa are 35, 36, and 37. There they are. Is that good? Questions on that one? You guys okay with all these word problems? There's more coming. There's a lot of them. There's 23 word problems in this section. They're not all word problems, but most of them are. It's okay? No questions? Good? Now, on the next, let me just give you a heads up. On the next problem, they're going to talk about consecutive odd. Let's, let's just talk about that right now. Consecutive odd and how that might be different. If, um, if they talk about consecutive odd numbers, how's that going to be different than just consecutive? Well, odd, they, 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 they go up like 17, 19, 21, or... 83, 85, 87, right? Odd numbers in a row, consecutive odd. They just be odd number to odd number to odd number in a row, huh? So how much do they go up by from number to number? What's the jump from number to number from odd to odd? It's adding two every time. Same thing here, right? 17 to 19, 19 to 20. It's adding two every time, isn't it? So therefore, you would start with x, because you always start with x. And the next one would be x add 2, and the one after that add 2 more, so it would be 4. That's how you would represent three odd numbers in a row. Does that make sense? So if they just say consecutive integers, they don't say even or odd, right? They just said consecutive integers, numbers. So that 
doesn't mean odd or even. So then you just go up by one every time. You always start with x. And you just go up by one every time if they just say consecutive numbers. But if they say consecutive odd, then you remember you got to go up by two every time. x, x plus two, x plus four. A really good question I get sometimes, I'm getting you ready for the next question, is people say, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. This is two and four are even. It's even. And this said odd. That's wrong. It should be one and three. Odd, not two and four. No, that's not true. Two and four is right. They're confusing the number with the jump between numbers. Right? Odd numbers have a jump between them that is two, don't they? Even though they themselves are odd, right? So this is right, add two, add four, because that's the jump, right? How far from 83 to 85? Two. How far from 83 to 87? Four. So that is correct. Now, the jump amount is still just two. What if they said consecutive even? Let's, let's, let's go for that question, because they will sometimes. Well, if they got three consecutive even numbers, you know, that'd be like 24, 26, 28, or something like that. So what would I do? First one's x. First one's always x, every word problem. So what, what, what would the next one be? First one's x. What would the next one be for even? Two. Yeah, same thing as odd, huh? And the next one, x plus 4. It doesn't matter. Even or odd, it's the same jump. Jump by 2, right? So everybody good with that story then? So if they just say consecutive, you only go up by 1 every time. If they say consecutive, odd, or even, either way, same story, go up by 2 every time. Because odd and even numbers jump by two. All right. So there it is. The sum of three consecutive odd. See, there it is. There's the word. It's not just consecutive. It's consecutive odd. So you know what to do. The first one's x. I'll give you that hint. You know that. So the first one's x, the next one's x plus 2, and the one after that's x plus 4, huh? Odd number to odd number, you go up by 2 every time. So here we go. So the first one plus the second one plus the third one. We have x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. Again, one of them's just plain x, huh? Every word problem equals 183. That good. Solve for x. Here's the wall. So x, x, and x. That's one x, one x, one x, three x, two and four is six. That's one eighty three. Is that good to there? So subtract 6 from both sides. What do we got? This is gone. 3x is something 177. Last step to get x alone. Divide by 3. x equals, I don't know, 50 and then... 59? 59. X is 59. So that's the key. Let's go unlock the doors. So X is 59. You put in this. This is 59. This is 59 plus 2, 61. This is 59 plus 4, 63. So there's the three answers, 59, 61, and 63. Three odd numbers in a row. Good. Questions? All is well? No questions? You getting all these word problems down? It's a lot of word problems, huh? A lot of different types of word problems. This is a real word problem section. Did the course just crank up to a new level? 
feels that way, huh? All right. Anybody know what's the perimeter of a rectangle formula? Anybody know that one? Almost. What is it? Oh, yeah, almost, real close. So, if, so if the, if it has a width this way and a width that way, we'll call this length this way. Oops. And length that way. So perimeter. Equals what? You tell me. Perimeter means all the way around the, the thing. Around the outside. So how, how far all the way around would it be? Two yeah, it'd be two widths and two lengths, wouldn't it? Does that make sense? If you, if you wanted to walk, if you're starting here, say, I'm going to start here, and I'm going to walk around this basketball court. Perimeter means the edge, right? Like you'll say, the security guard walked the perimeter. What does that mean? Walks around the outside of the shape, right? So you do the length, the width, the length again and the width again, huh? You do two lengths and two widths to go around the perimeter. That's why the perimeter formula is two widths plus two lengths. You can put that in your three by five card for exam number two, which is, which is not far away here in the summer. It's just a week from today. We'll be taking the test on all these word problems. All right, so two widths and two lengths is perimeter formula. All right, let's take it from there. Now, do they tell me what the perimeter is? 102, boom. Just put in perimeter, it's 102. Let me just keep it in red for now. 102 is the perimeter. All right, and then 2 times the width plus 2 times the length. Let me hold up before I do width. Um, now, if I, if I just write it like this, I'm not going to be able to solve that because I have two letters. You know what I mean? I don't... I don't want to have two letters. I want to have only one letter, right? I can't solve with two letters. I need to have only one letter. So how can I change, change it so that I don't have W and L both and just get it into one letter somehow so I can solve it for that letter? How could I do that? Any idea? Would you go with X? Um, I could do stuff with X. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I'd like to just stick with L and W since I know what they are. But how about this sentence right here? Let me write it real, real clear here. L is... What is is? Equals. Equals. Six longer than... Twice W. That's what that sentence is saying, right? Just take it over here with a little cleaner writing, a little simpler writing. L is, so L equals six longer. What do you think six longer is? Six added, right? Something's longer, you add six. Six added, six longer than what? Twice W, yeah. Two W. Is that good so far? That's what they're saying with the second part of the sentence. Length is, L is, six more than, six added to twice W. <clears throat> right? Now, what can I do with this information to make this equation not have, to, or my main equation, not have two letters? Have you seen substitution before? I can take this right here and plug that in for L. Does that make sense? Because what? Why? Because L is six plus two W. It equals six plus two W. Which means anywhere you see L, you're allowed to replace just the L, not the two. The two will still st stay there, but just the L part with six plus two W because it is six plus two W. It equals six plus two W. You see that before? It's called substitution when you plug in. Right? I should be able to plug all this in right there for L. 
because it is 6 plus 2L. So let's do that. Let me rewrite this with a little more room. Plus 2L, but instead of L, I'm going to put parentheses 6 plus 2W. You see what I did there? This L, which is right next to a 2, has become 6 plus 2W because it is 6 plus 2W. And now, why is that so great? Because now I've only got one letter, and I can solve it. Now I've only got W, and so I can solve it for W. Is that good on that? We slow down a bit. Do you see how we did that? Questions I can answer on that? So I took that second part of the sentence, length is six more than twice width, and I plug that in for L. So now I've got an equation with only W. Can you solve for W in that equation now? How's that going? I can't read you guys. You guys are a very quiet group. Give me nods, up and down yes or no. Ms. Farron, talk about that some more. I'll know whether to speed up or slow down. Is that making sense? Anything I can question you out on that so far? So solve for W. Is W like 15 or something? Yeah. W comes out, I think W comes out 15. And then once you get W, you plug into the L formula, right? To get L? It should be 36, I think. Is that good? All right, let me, let me go through all those details. So right here, 102 equals 2W plus boom and a boom, right? Outside of parentheses, distributes. Um, we get 12 plus 4W. So 102 equals 2W and 4W. W's on the same side. They just... Add together, right? So that'd be 6W plus 12. Good to there. Right? And W saying I won't be alone. So subtract 12 from both sides. And that's what? 90. It's a little scribbly there. 90 is 6W. Bring it over here. 90 is 6W. Last step to solve for W is divide by 6. W equals up 15. W equals 15. So we got the width. Now, how do we get the length? Well, now that you have that, plug it in right there, right? The W is 15. So the length will equal 6 plus 2 times 15. So that's 6 plus 30. So the length is 36. So we got the length, we got the width, we're done. How is that? Questions I can answer? What's that? Oh, yeah, that'd work, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that one instead. Yep, that would work, too. Good idea. Yeah. Other questions on that? So, see, let me run over one more time. So, perimeter all the way around an object is two widths plus two lengths. And they told me length, that second part of the sentence, said length is six more than, six added, to twice width. Length is 6 plus 2W. Plug that in for L right there, and you get all W now. Distribute and solve for W. Get the answer. Plug back in to get L. Just as simple as that. Not simple at all. It's a hard one. All right. Different types of word problems here. This is like one of the biggest word problem sections. So um, Amy paid $88.16 for a pair of running shoes during a 20% off sale. What was the regular price? Hmm. What was the regular price? Was it 
Was the regular price higher or lower? Yeah, some higher regular price. All right, let me give you, they're going to give us a bunch of these. They're going to give us like five probably in this section, five that are very, very similar. I'm going to call them percent increase, percent decrease just to help. So if they give you a percent increase problem, that would be like if somebody gets um, a raise or if you put taxes on something, things that make it go up, right? If you got a raise, your pay goes up. They put taxes, that makes the price go up, right? So things like that, it's going to be X plus percent X is new price. And then if they give, um, if they give percent decrease, that would be like if something is on sale then it's going to be X minus percent X is the new price. So those are two formulas. They're kind of canned formulas. They're ready to go. Use those. I, you know, put them on your 3 by 5 card for exam number two next Thursday and um, use them during the exam. Those will help because they're going to give us like five of these in this section, percent increase. Basically, any problem dealing with percentage in this section, any Word problem dealing with percentage, just use those, one of those two formulas. How do you know which one? Well, just ask yourself, is the price going up or down? Is it a sale going down or is it a tax or a tip or raise or something? All right, so what is this one? The shoes are on sale, so that's a decrease. It's percent decrease. It's on sale, so we're going to use this formula right here. X minus. Now, what's the percentage? 20. What do we do with a 20%? Yeah, make it decimal, 0 0.20. Right, we always change percentages to decimals when we use them in formulas. X is the new price. 88.16 is the new price that she paid, after, you know, lower than the original, right? Because it was on sale. 88.16. Doesn't seem like a, a, a bargain to me, but anyway. So, 88.16. Is this good so far? Is this making sense? I'm using the percent decrease formula. X minus percentage of X is 88.16, the new price. Okay. Because well, what that's saying is whatever the original price was, we don't know. We're trying to figure it out, huh? The original higher price. Take away 20% of, of is times. See, this is times. Original price, take away 20% of the original price is the new price. That's the idea. That's why this little formula works. All right. Got to finish, whoops, I didn't mean to erase it. Uh, Got to finish solving for x there. Can you solve that for x? Let me let you take the next step there. Solve for x. got to combine these, right? Like terms. What number is really in front of that x? 1. So, you know, if we had like 7x minus 3x, you know, that'd be, you just subtract the numbers before x, huh? So what do you do with 1x minus 0.20x? Yeah, $1, take away 20 cents. Be 0.80x, huh? We good to there? Is that making sense? I just subtracted the numbers in front of the x, just like terms there, right? What's the last step to get x alone? What am I going to do? I divide, right, by the point 80, like that. So x equals, I don't know, what, somebody got that? 110.2? 110.2. So there we go. It's $110.20. What a deal. The original price, that's the original price for the shoes before they went on sale. Is that good? Did you like that one? They're going to give you a bunch of those, so it'll get easier. They're just kind of the same every time. And so the only difference between the increase and the decrease formulas 
is the increase has the plus, because you add to the price. The decrease has the minus, you lower the price, right? Otherwise, they're the same formulas. Original price, plus or minus, a percentage of the original is the new price. Notice there's two X's. There's always more than one X in these things, huh? Common mistake. Here's what I'll see a lot of people do. A lot of people go, I see X minus 0.20 is um, 8816. What's missing now? The other X needs to be right there, huh? There's got to be two X's in these. Remember, there's always a plain X and then an X formula. Have you noticed that pattern? All these problems. So if you're starting to do something and you only have one X, stop yourself Go. no, 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 can't be. There's always a plain X and then like another X in some kind of a formula. So this has to be an X here, and that'll change how the problem works. All right, so watch out for that. Let's try another one. So, try that one. Employee's new salary is $16,800 after getting a 5% raise. What was sorry before the increase in pay? Try that one. So it's a percentage. As soon as you see that percentage, you want to think, okay, either percent increase or percent decrease. It's going to be one of those two formulas. Which one is this? Is this an increase or a decrease? Are they, are they making the price go higher or lower? Yeah. Raise is higher, huh? So this is a percent increase, right? So we're saying, okay, this percent increase. So it's some original price X plus a percent, I don't know what the original salary was. It was some original lower salary, X, and it was increased. It was added to by a percentage of it, and that came out to be the new higher price of 16800 Right? The new higher salary. The percentage, 5%, it's not 0.5, careful, it's 0.05, right? Got to be two places on the decimals, 0.05. So there we go. Can you solve that? All right. What's in front of this other plain X? Always a 1. So 1x plus 0.05x is 1.05x equals 16,800. Like that. Good. Last step. Divide. And somebody have a calculator? Just 16,000 straight? Yeah. Oh, straight, okay. So the salary was 16,000 before the raise of 5% brought it up to 16,800. There it is. Are we good? Are, are, are you excited about this? <laughs> are we good? Questions on this one? I'm feeling like the dentist again. You know, you guys are paying me to do this to you. You guys look a little tortured out there. Would you like a little Novocaine with this lecture? Would that help? Is this okay? You guys okay? Anything I can answer? Is this making sense? All right. All right. Ton of words, but it's really a dumb one. Um, and I'm not going to give you something like this on the test. This is just a weird problem. I'm just going to do a quick... All right, blah, 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 hospital parking lot charges 3 bucks for the first hour and one fifty for each additional hour or part thereof. Okay, so let's just get that straight first off. 
the parking cost. You're going to park at the hospital. It's three bucks for the first hour, and it's what, $1.50 for each extra hour or part thereof. Meaning, if you just do a little bit of another hour, they're going to charge you the dollar fifty. You ever done that with those metered things? The airport or something, you try to make it out real quick and you just begin the next hour and they charge you for that next hour. They do that. So, so it's three bucks for the first hour and then it's a dollar fifty every hour you even start to begin. Start to begin. You begin after that. All right? Now, um, now there's this weekly pass option. 38 bucks. We're going to kind of compare. Um, Johnny, it's a funny way to spell Johnny, no, no H. Johnny makes a hospital visit. Each visit lasts three and a half hours. So if you have a three and a half hour visit, every time Johnny goes to the hospital, he makes a three and a half hour visit. If you make a three and a half hour visit, what's the cost of that for the parking? Can we figure that out? It's three bucks for the first hour plus the dollar fifty. You know, first hour's three bucks, second hour's a dollar fifty, third hour's a dollar fifty, and then he begins the fourth hour, doesn't he? Because three and a half. So he has to pay for a full another hour, right? They said even if you begin part of an hour, you pay another buck fifty. You tracking with me on that? Is that good? You, you tracking close behind? Is that good? As they say in the South, are you smelling what I'm stepping in? Is that, is that good? I like that saying. It's a good way to put it. Are you with me that close? Is that good? Right. Each extra hour. Dollar yeah. fifty for each extra hour, or part thereof. So dollar fifty for the second hour, dollar fifty for the third hour, and a dollar fifty for the fourth. Even though he doesn't do the whole fourth, he only does three and a half. You have to. If you begin another hour, you pay one fifty. Am I answering your question? Maybe I didn't listen well. Yeah, I think you got it. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, what is that? Four fifty, seven fifty. So seven fifty per visit, huh? So, so Johnny's gonna pay seven dollars and fifty cents for parking every visit. Does that making sense? I'm not. By the way, you can notice I'm not using an X on this problem. I'm just gonna play with the numbers. I think it's easier. Math Excel will show you some big method using an X. So seven fifty per visit. Now here's their question. Basically, um, should Johnny do the seven fifty per visit, or should he get the thirty eight dollar weekly pass? Well, of course, it depends how many times Johnny comes, huh? And that's what they're asking. How many visits um, would it take for Johnny to make the weekly pass a good idea? Right? How many visits? What What's the number of visits? Times seven fifty each to be over the what thirty eight dollar pass, so that the pass would be cheaper. You know what I mean? That's what they're asking, right? Do you see that? They're saying how many visits times seven fifty for each visit would bring the price over thirty eight, so it'd be better for him just to buy the weekly pass. That's really their question. So I I would just guess. I would go. I don't know. How about five? What's five times seven fifty? Thirty five and two. Wouldn't that be thirty-seven fifty? So that's under. So if he's only going to come five times, it would be better just to pay for the pass each time. You're only going to pay thirty-seven fifty instead of thirty-eight. But if Johnny comes six times, would that be forty-two and forty-five? Forty-five bucks. That's over. So basically, the answer is if Johnny comes six times, six visits should buy the pass. He should buy the, whatever, $38 pass. It'd be cheaper. So if Johnny comes six visits or more, it would be cheaper for him to buy the pass. Do you see how I figured that out?
never used an X. That okay? Questions I can answer? That's, that's a weird, I'm not going to give something like that on the test. That's a weird question. Let's move on, if you're okay with that. All right, it'll be on the word problems in this section. Okay. Here we go. Triangle ABC, size of the triangle of angle B is three times the size of angle A. The size of C is 20 less than six times the size of angle A. Find size of angles. Do you know there's one, you don't need to know a bunch of geometry for this class or anything. There's just one fact, really, that you need to know. Does anybody know it? In a triangle, what's the total of the three inner angles? 180. Always 180, yeah. So if you don't know that, make note of it. So let me write that. Um, all three angles in any triangle add up to equal 180 degrees. Yeah, you just you got to know they're assuming you know that. You got to know that the three angles add to be 180. Okay. So the three angles add to be 180. So what am I So you could say basically that A plus B plus C are going to add to be 180. <clears throat> That's true. But I can't solve an equation with three letters, huh? I got to get it to be just one letter. All A or all B or all C somehow, and then I can solve it. You with me? I've been talking word problems at you for more than an hour now. You, you still tracking? It's okay? So, so just like the one we did a minute ago, which one was it? Um, where we had like a couple letters. There. Yeah, the perimeter. That was it. Perimeter of the basketball rectangle thing. Remember we had two letters at first? And then we had to make it all just one letter so we could solve it. That's always the case, right? If you have a formula that has a couple letters like L and W or A, B, and C, then you got to get it to be just one letter, like we got it to be all W so we could say it, solve it, right? So that's what we have to do here. So same thing. we got to get it to be one letter. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, they're, they're saying stuff up there that will help you. What are they saying? Um, B is B equals 3 times A. Right? B is 3 times A. See that? So that means, boom, 3A. B is 3A. Angle B is 3 times A. Right? And what about C? C is... 20 less, hmm, what did we learn about that? It seems like it was a long time ago, but it was just this week. We talked about this Monday. So it was a lot of math ago, but it was just three days ago. So um, remember when they go blah, 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 20 less, what do you do with that? If I, if I, if I wrote 20 less than 100, you'd all know right away. We, we think better with numbers. 20 less than 100, where's the 20 go? Is, it, is the 20 go in the front? No, you know, you know the 20s at the back, huh? Somebody said 20 less than 100. So it's same thing here. The 20 goes at the back. Remember, less than, 20 less than, the 20 goes subtracted at the back. That's just what those English words mean. Uh, what goes in the front? Six times A. Six A. So C equals six A minus 20. Right? C equals 6a minus 20. Everybody with me? So that means right here, c is, c equals 6a minus 20. Boom, right there for c. 6a minus 20. Whoops, I'm kind of scribbling. And this is still just a. There we go. Do you all see that? y'all see what happened there? So A is just A. We'll leave that as A. B is 3A, and C is 6A minus 20. Now we have it all with one letter we can solve. See how that worked? Just like the perimeter one with the L and the W, right? Can you solve that for A?
So A, 3A, and 6A. Remember, there's a 1 in front of that A, like, like always. 1A, 3A, it's 4, 6 is 10A. 10A minus 20 is 180. A is saying, I want to be alone. So add the 20. And we get 10A equals 200. Bring it up here. 10A is 200. Last step in solving is divide by 10. And A is 20. All right, a lot of work there. So we got A. A is 20. How can we get B and C? Plug them in, right? A is 20. What's B? B right here. Take that A, 20. Put in 20. 3 times 20, 60. B, 60. Everybody see that? And how about C? C is... 6a minus 20, right? It says it right here. B is, C is 6a minus 20. So that's going to be 6 times, oh, not 60. B A is 20. Huh? 6 times 20 minus 20. Was that 100? I think C is 100, right? Yeah. Or I could have just subtracted from 180, huh? Because 20 and 60 is 80. they got to make 180 all together. It's got to be 100, huh? Anyway, whatever. It's good. They make 180 degrees, don't they? The three of them. Are we good? Is this a lot of word problems? Look what number we're on. 12 out of 23. We're like halfway on that. But, but pretty much we've seen almost everything at this point. I don't think there's any other types. I think they're going to repeat. We'll see. I'll go forward. But good on that, we've seen a lot of different types. This is a much harder section than anything we've had before. All right, let me do it quick. So, yeah, whip that one out with the greatest of ease, I'm hoping. Percent? Is that a percent increase or a percent decrease? Yeah, grew, increase, huh? So it's a percent increase. That formula is x plus percent x equals new, right? Right? The original x plus a percentage of the original equals the new. And so that's x plus 0.28x equals the new price, 384. Good to there? Just like the other one, right? Just like the one where the person got the raise a few minutes ago. The raise was an increase, percentage increase, 0.05, I think it was. Bless you. Okay, so now there's an understood one in front here, 1x plus 0.28x is 1.28x, is 384, last step, x10, I want to be alone, divide by the 1.28, x equals, I have no idea, 300? Yeah. Oh, I'm just guessing, all right, 300, 300, so the original price was 300, it increased to be 384, so there we go, is that good, those are easy, right? They're going to give you a bunch of those. Percent increase, percent decrease, just a whole bunch of those. That's the same. That's not new. Good on that. Okay, 16. Worker on a production line is paid a base salary, 190 per week. So base salary, 190 per week on a production line, uh, plus... A dollar three per unit produced. Uh, one week the worker earned one 
Worker earned what? Four twenty two seventy eight. How many uh, how many units? Whoops. Produced. How many units produced? Okay, so base salary is 190 plus. So the way they pay this worker on the assembly line is they get them, they give them 190, and then a dollar three per unit. That's on top of the 190, right? 190 is the base, and then they get a dollar three per unit they crank out. So, if the worker earned 422.78, how many units did the worker produce? I'm not going to use an X on this one. I think, I think we can do this without an X, right? Well, how would you do this problem? Yeah, does that make sense for everybody? You just take the, take the, go over here, take the 422.78, and you subtract the base pay, huh? What's that, 222, 232.78, is that right? Yeah, so, so, there, so the, you subtract the base pay, Oh, did I mess that up? It would be 222. Uh, oh, 232. Is that what you're saying? Yes. yes thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, so there's the, uh, we subtract out the base pay. And so the 232.78 must be what they got for just the units produced, huh? Once you take out the base pay, right? So that's what they got for the units produced. And they, we know they got a dollar three. For each unit, so then if I divide that by 1.03, I'll get like 200 units produced or something. What is it? Okay, I'm just guessing. 226 units. And there we go. Is that good? Is that making sense there? Right, so... Just, so no X's. I'm not going to mess with any X's. Just subtract out the base pay. What's left over is the unit from producing units. Divide by $1.03 per unit. Must be 226 units that produce that. All right, let's do this one. Malcolm paid an average of $32 per tie for a recent purchase of three ties. The price of one tie was twice as much as another, and the remaining tie cost 21 bucks. What were the prices of the other two ties? So, yeah, this one's a little tricky. So, how many ties did he eat? Three ties, okay. So he bought three ties, average of 32 bucks per tie. So Malcolm paid an average of 32 bucks per tie and he bought three ties. Can we figure out like the total amount of money that Malcolm paid? Can we do that? Or does that make any sense to you that like if, if somebody tells you the average, Malcolm paid on average $32 per tie. That means what, what does an average mean? It's like they're all that number. They're not really, some are really high or some are lower. But if you average them, it's like they're all 32. Right? Does that mean that's what an average means, right? It, it's leveling out. So Malcolm paid 32 plus 32 plus 32. It's at 96 for all three ties. Now, he didn't really pay 32 for each one. That was just the average. But they're saying that so that I can do this. Does that make sense? It's 32 per tie on average, three ties. So it's like it's 32, 32, 32. They're, it's not really. Some are higher, some are lower. But if you level them out, like if you had piles of sand, you said some that were higher and some that were lower, and you leveled the sand out, right? Take the higher ones and fill in the lower ones and level them. It's like they're all at 32. So three piles of 32. 96 total sand, right? Does that make sense? So they're being tricky. They're, they're on the slide trying to give me the total with trickery.
pretty tricky. So that's the total. That's the total for all three ties. I don't know what any one... They're not really each 32. I'm going to figure that out in a minute what they are, but they're not each 32. That's the total for all three. Okay, now let's get down to business and find... That's, that's just the total. I had to just do that first. The price of one tie was twice as much as another. Hey, what's the first one going to be? What's the first one going to be on every word problem? Just X, right? Just X. What's the second one going to be? Twice. How we doing? Just going to be 2X? We good? Am I losing you? I'm getting nervous. I'm doing the Charlie Brown teacher up here. The wah, wah, wah. Am I making any sense? Am I coming through? Are you guys thinking, Mr. Harry, just give me that test. I want to be done. It's coming pretty soon, but we got to get through this stuff. We'll never finish this course. Sorry, we can't just do tests on test day. Is this okay? Are you okay with that? Does that make sense? So the first one is X on every word problem. The next one, the price was twice. So 2X. And then the remaining tie, the third tie, must be what? <coughs> well, just straight 21. No, no X needed, just straight 21, huh? No formula, really. There's the three ties. X, 2X, and 21. First one's always X. Every word problem, right? Okay, now what? So what? What can I do with X, 2X, and 21? Yeah, they must add it to be 96 because we found that 96 was the total of all three. Right? Right here. Good? Tricky. So now... We're going to solve for x. 1x and 2x. 3x. x is in one below. Subtract 21 from both sides. So it's gone. 3x is 75. 75. Last step in getting x alone. Divide by 3. X equals, what's that, 25? X is 25. Now, that's, that's X. That's the key, but I still have to unlock the doors. Right? That's just the key. Let's go back now and unlock the doors. So 25, 20, everywhere you got X, the mystery's over. We now know X is 25. So that means the first tie is 25. The second is 2 times 25, $50. And the third, we've known all along, is 21 bucks. There they are. Is that okay on that? Questions on that? So they, again, they started with the average. 30, the average is 32, so it's like 30, 32 plus 32 plus 32, 96 for all three. But then in reality, you had to add the first. The second is twice, so 2x. Third is 21 to be 96. Solve for x, plug it in. And so the two ties that we didn't know the prices for are 25 and 50. The other one was 21. We knew that all along. All right, all right.